Happy New Year, everybody. Merry Christmas. I hope everybody had a good Christmas and a New Year's. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to create your own LUTs in DaVinci Resolve. Um, this is an awesome process, something that's very useful. And today, we're going to be creating this LUT here that you can see. You're looking at it before me, so tell me if it looks good. We're going to be taking a look at that. It's going to be a quick tutorial how to make your own LUTs in DaVinci Resolve, how to export them. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and get somewhere warmer because it's really cold. Let's go. All right, so the first thing you want to do is select an assortment of different clips here when creating a LUT. Now, the reason I do this is because I want to make sure that when I'm making my LUT, it's going to apply to different situations and scenarios. For example, I chose this one because it's outdoors. It's got green, yellow, and a little bit of that purple there. Um, I chose this one because it's indoors with a tungsten light bulb here and a little bit of blue from the outside. This one here because it was later in the afternoon, so I've got lots of blues and orange from the inside tungsten light bulbs. Uh, this one because it was being lit by a window midday and you guys get the idea some outdoor some indoors This one's got different colors and then this one I chose because I wanted to make sure that my magentas and purples were in check That's why I chose this one here for the purples. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the color tab and get started So when we're making this lot, we are making a creative lot We're not making a technical lot or a transform lot those ones that you can make or download from different camera manufacturers and websites. This one's gonna be creative LUT, so we're gonna be doing creative decisions. So you wanna keep in mind that you're not doing specific things that are pertaining to one single image, but instead you're doing global edits that are gonna apply to all your clips. So what we're gonna do here is instead of just working on one, we're gonna go over to the timeline so that we affect all our clips. And we wanna keep this in mind as we're doing our edits because we don't wanna do things that are specific. For example, we wanna stay away from doing qualifiers or any masks or windows or sharpening or grain. We don't wanna be touching those. We wanna be doing more colors, contrast, saturation, those kind of edits are the ones that are gonna be good for a LUT because LUTs are very simple, um, little transform things. It tells you what a color is and what it's going to turn into. So they're very simple tools, so we have to keep that in mind as we're making them. So the second thing you wanna be thinking about when creating a LUT is what color space are you working in? So since this is a creative LUT, we're gonna be working in Rec. 709. So since mine was shot in HLG2, it's pretty close to Rec. 709, so I'm not gonna do many edits here. But if you're working in something else like a log footage, what you're gonna to wanna to do is color space transform and apply that to one of your nodes. Keep in mind this one is not being exported, so make sure to label it something like delete so that you remember not to export this node and we're gonna put that at the end. You can then go through your settings here and make sure you're in the right color space and you're transforming to um, Rec. 709, so Rec. 709, but I'm using Timeline since my setting is set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Once you've done that, we're gonna add some nodes before that. We're gonna do a couple here, and this is not gonna be a color grading tutorial necessarily, so I'm just gonna go pretty quickly on here, and I'm not gonna to spend too much time creating the LUT, but this is something that I might do if I'm doing a creative LUT. So I might start with editing a custom curve because I wanna add a little bit of contrast and saturation into the image that I'm working on. As you can see here, it's pretty uh, low contrast here in the middle, so I'm gonna add some contrast. So the first thing I do here in my curves is I go to editable splines, it's already selected. I like to work on that because you can add a little bit of a better curve. I'm gonna add this as curve. And let's go ahead and start editing this, adding a little bit of contrast, bringing that down, and then bringing this back up a little bit. And you can also pop this out if you need to work in a little bit more detail. I'm just gonna go quickly here and add a couple custom curves that are gonna do a cool effect. All right, so as you can see here, now our curves is affecting and actually doing quite a bit of edits there. So that's my curves. The next thing I might do is go into my hue versus hue. And one thing I like to do here real quick is just add one for every color and start swinging these hues in different ways that I know that I like. So for example, my purples, I like to leave there, but I do know that I like my blues a little bit more into the teal side. So I'm just gonna bring that up. I know you can't see that right now, and that's why we have different clips because I know that we're gonna wanna take a look at what the teals are doing. Great, so let's label this hue. Same, I'm gonna go into my saturation and do the same thing. Now, since I'm here on saturation, I do notice that I'd like to add a little bit of saturation just so I can see how I'm swinging my hues. So one thing I'm gonna do here is go back to the beginning 
add another node down here. I'm gonna also label this delete. So I remember to delete that. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra saturation, almost 56, just so I can see what I'm doing over on this hue. I'll make sure to delete that at the end. And this is what the hue is doing. Very subtle changes, but there you go. The next one here I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a little bit with my shadow midtone and highlight colors. Now keep in mind that this is not something that we wanna be editing the image too much with contrast because every image is different. So we don't wanna be touching our temp and um, our tint because every image is gonna be shot differently and it's gonna be looking differently. So if you wanna do any of those edits, I might go to the delete one and I might adjust this to make it a little bit warmer so I can correct it over here and then I can do my creative decisions over here. So I'm gonna come in here and call this um, log wheels or we'll call them primary. All right, there we go. And another thing I wanna do here is I'm gonna add a parallel node to hue. And another thing is I'm gonna to go to this spider web and do some hue swings on this one. So I'm gonna go here and add the 12 and then start moving some things around. So I'm gonna pop this out just so I can see it better. Put it over here. All right, so there's before and there's after. So now here's the fun part. Now we go to clips and then we can test this on the other ones. Now, if you do remember, we are in timeline so we can just go ahead and flick to the other one and start seeing what we're doing in our other clips. There's before and there's after, so I'm liking those edits there. Let's take a look at that. I definitely don't see anything cracking or swinging too much one way or the other. I do like that. Let's take a look at that. I do like how the clouds are getting a little bit of yellow. I don't know if you can see that there. So I do like that subtle yellow and greenish hues into those clouds, so I'm gonna keep that. Before and after, I do really like that. That looks amazing. I do love the teal in the sky here instead of the more purple blue. I, I don't know if you can see here, this is a little bit more purple and here's a little bit more greenish teal. So I do like those edits that we've done. And then here's the last one. Yeah, that's quite nice. I do feel like this one is pretty lifted. I think when I shot it, it was pretty misty outside. So I'm gonna go again to the delete one. I'm just gonna kind of tweak that to see if I like the color. So I'm gonna bring that down just real fast like that. Add a little bit more of that contrast, bring that down, bring my sky down a little bit, and then let's see that full screen. Yeah, I'm really liking that. So I'm pretty happy with the edits we've done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is come here and delete that node and delete this node. Remember, we only wanna export this stuff here. Now that this is done, we're gonna now export this. We're gonna to go to clips and we're gonna select our clip. We're gonna right click and you're gonna go down to generate LUT and we're gonna just export a 33 point cube. That is sufficient for most of the things you do. 65 point cube, uh, it just basically is a larger cube, it has more information, but it is a large file and um, usually you don't need this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a 33 point cube. Now we have an export cube. And now we can test this LUT and see how that looks. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna move those clips down and we're gonna add another one here. I'm gonna connect this so we can do it a little before and after and then connect this one over here. There we go. Great. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the LUT section here and we're gonna just go, and this is what I like to do. I just go here, right click and I say open file location just like that and we're gonna go back one. I'm gonna open it here and just call a new folder. So let's go and say, we'll call it tutorial. Inside tutorial, we're just gonna grab this and I'm gonna simply just drag and drop. And that's as simple as that. Now we go over here and just right click any folder and just say refresh. And then now we can see that there's a tutorial called export cube. We're gonna drag and just drop that onto there. Now we can compare, this is the LUT that we just created and here is all the mess that we created earlier. So now we're gonna just swap this and drop it. And as you can see, nothing actually changes. That's because it's been exported just how we wanted it. And of course, now that we have that LUT, what we can do now is go to the clip section. Since the LUT's being applied to the whole timeline, now we can go to the clip and they go to an individual clip, for example, this one. And now since the LUT is applied on the timeline, my clip here, I can go in here and do my edits and my contrast and saturation and other things like this. Tweak it, make it a little bit more warm. Maybe I want my oranges to pop out a little bit more. I can come in here and grab that and say all of this, saturate that a little bit more. I also love my blues over here, so saturate my blues a little bit more. And there's my final image before and after, just that. 
and of course our LED is over here at the top, so before and after all of it. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope that video was helpful to you guys. If it was, make sure to like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in next week's video.